ring the bell, and you no longer have to wake up at 5 o'clock. Ring the bell, and you no longer have to do the runs, the obstacle course, the PT, and you no longer have to endure the hardships of training. All you have to do is ring the bell to get out. If you want to change the world, don't ever, ever ring the bell. Yes, I got it. Please, can you zip that back up, Jay? Yeah, I will be. You know how I feel about you driving? Why? You don't be horrible. I heard you were that on arm snoozing for 40 minutes. <laughs> Am I the only one with big energy on the morning? <laughs> hey. It is. It's like four in the morning. Listen, you've got to be up and ready. I am up and ready. Shut up, you're half asleep. I'm not half asleep whatsoever. You're dribbling. You're just like a huge child. You've got to be. Get up, you're ready for the world. I'm so excited to go on the airplane. That's what I want, Grace. Come on. Yeah, I'm so excited to go on the airplane. 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 I'm so well, press your little button, Grace. Don't do that, I'll get in trouble for it. Right, let's go. Let's go, come on, Grace. That's everything else. What should I do? Just got to check in now. No, no, yep, yeah, yeah, just put see in spade. Yeah, I'll yeah, see you in spade. I'll see you in spade. Yeah, I'll see you in spade. Yeah, I'll see you in spade. Yeah, I'll see you drive to Marbella first. We're going to visit Frank out there, do some work with Frank, do some protection work with him for the revisit, and then we're going to head back to meet Kenzo, who should be arriving in the morning to do the handover with us. Don't have to pronounce this. <laughs> so we've arrived in Marbella. We're revisiting Frank. Seb handed him over recently. And I'm here to do the first ever session of protection. I'm going to teach the client how to handle him, have a fun session with him, see where he's at, discuss with the client what's going to happen, and then teach them from there and progress next time we come again. I'm just going to knock on the door. You oh, realise something's there that shouldn't be there because you're seeing about a climate that's not normal behaviour. When you feel at ease, Frank, watch him. Okay. He'll kick off at that point. Stand, keep your pace. I'll come try and attack you. I'll have a fight with him, scream out, get him off, leave him on. And just work with him as a team. Good boy. Just stay calm. Yeah. Don't panic because you're just working as a team. I just want you to tell him, good boy, and work as a pair. Good lad, Frank, good boy. I'm, I could be screaming, shouting, help. So do that while you're screaming. Yeah, you, 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 you remain calm. Because I'm the one that's been attacked and you're the one that's been calm and like, this is this is your job. Yeah. You're looking after me and good boy for it. Okay. It's fun. I'll help you through it. Yeah, trust I'm with you and everything, but not Ross with me, no problem at all. I saw you on YouTube. Did you? You'll see this on YouTube, maybe. Go on, what's your name? Harley. Harley. 
You watch them, don't you? He goes, Mum, I can see the, the owner of Frank on YouTube. Don't you? I'll tell you what, we're buying our today. It was very personal for you, I think. I think it was super personal. I've seen a video of Frank on YouTube. Have you? Yeah, when you're walking up the lane and, and Norman... He videoed that? Norman hides behind the shed. Yeah, he videoed that for us. And then he got the, and then he got the sleeve. We'll do that now, we'll get him right in. <laughs> 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 time I've worked the dog there in protection after Seb handed him over and it, it, the dog was amazing like everything I expected if not more and I think the next time we go back we'll be way more serious and way better again um, we'll do the scenarios we'll do the robberies we'll do the street muggings we'll do everything that the customer wants and we'll get the result that they wanted and as a first visit today I'm over the moon without my arms killing me it's swollen as well up you can't really see from there, but the skin's come off through all the neoprenes, through everything. Arm's quite swollen, but the biting was phenomenal. I was really happy with it. And now we'll go off and do, you know, Kenzo should arrive early in the morning and we'll do a handover with him. So overall, so far so good. What I do after my new routine is I walk the dogs, mm -hmm. then I d they don't come back into the house after walking. The the, uh, then they I put them in the car. Okay. I prepare, Manuela normally prepares breakfast. Okay. One of the most important things when handing over a dog is sitting with the client and completely understanding their lifestyle, the routine, the structure that they already have, and how we implement that with the dog that we're supplying. So where does the dog come into that structure? How do we adapt certain things? Or how do we teach them to adapt the dog into that environment? Each customer has completely different lifestyles and the living arrangements and daily routines. And it's for me to sit there and understand and say, okay, based on everything that we've just spoke about and everything that you're telling me, this is how I would go around doing this. Now it isn't the same for every handover because obviously everybody has different lifestyles and different requirements different arrangements so we sit down we get into really big detail before we do anything we then plan some structure together and then over the next couple of days we'll go over the over the structure over the way that the customer does things and help implement everything that we've taught into the structure hour and a half. yeah it's a long walk yeah uh, and then we come back and then they have the that's it done. food finish and then finish and perfect. before we go to back, I do a little VV uh, yeah. again. Yeah. So. Perfect, perfect routine. If you stick to that routine, which you already do, it doesn't yeah. need changing. Nice found toys. Look his tail. Look. <laughs> Look his tail. Look his tail. <laughs> way more alert, way more close to you and he's way more looking round. Sometimes yeah. if you hear something he'll spin round and look behind you. That's yeah. normal, it's okay for him. Don't be like, oh what's he doing? He just likes to check your perimeter. Yeah. Always. It, it is natural to some degree, but it's the scenarios that you train the dog for for the dog to then remember them things. So you're almost training like the scenario, so you're walking down the street and someone would pop out, the dog then remembers that. So if you've done that so many times, the repetition, the dog's half expecting something to potentially happen on the walk. 
So the dog goes, something could happen on here because I've used to doing this before and mm. someone's popped out at me before and tried attacking my owner. So the dog then becomes alert, ready for something. Mm. But that will go over time and that's why you need to come back and reinforce it. Because after a year of nothing happening, touch wood, the dog then walks calmer and calmer and goes, there's nothing going to happen at this point. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is the <laughs> Jesus Christ. I said, all right, fair enough. <laughs> He's going to have a good life. Yeah. So, he said, how many litres is yours? So, for example, this is what I would do. So, walk up, out. I take the ball off him, out. 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 So, this is a good behaviour. So, when people say out, they always take something from the dog and then the dog becomes more possessive over it. So, for yeah. me, out should also be a positive thing. So, yeah. when he outs, Yes, good boy, make the out fun. Yeah. Because people always take something from a dog when they out, but you can make it a positive thing as well as a negative thing. He has yeah. to out anyway. Yeah. But if he outs, that's rewarding for outing. Yeah. Yeah? So the game continues by him outing. Yeah. Because sometimes what happens is a ball dog, you know, a dog will bring a ball back and someone will go out or leave and take it off yeah. him and then the game's over. So the dog has no enjoyment out of letting go of what he loves. Yeah. So what I would do is I create a game out of it. So then no. Out. So I take it off him, out, out, yes, ah, good boy, so the out's now fun, we go back into the game, okay, yeah. sit, out, yes, good boy, that's good, yep. and I make the out fun, Yeah. so he wants to out quicker in opposed to having to give him a correction all the yeah. time, you can make it positive as well. Don't be scared, come on, ah. sit, sit, ah, good. <laughs> okay, let's go. There you go. Oh, oh. Nearly. oh. Clever man. I'm over you. What are we saying? Let's head back. Um, showered? There's some food. I'm starved. There was some nice food. Is that the second half? The second first half of the handover here? Yeah. yeah. Um, it's been a, been a really, really, really positive day. The dogs have done great. All the dogs are adapting to each other. Um, he's getting more settled. Tonight we'll go back, do another recheck on him. Tomorrow we go again. Yeah, it's been really good. I'm really happy for him. So anytime you look at a dog's routine and go to its place of where it's going to be most of the time, you look at the dogs there, the animals there, and you try fit the dog into the to the environment that it's in. This particular dog will be seeing Kenzo a lot at this particular place, and we're just getting to understand the dog and what it's all about and having a bit of fun. And plus, Grace likes doing obedience everywhere we go anyway, so if she can do a bit of obedience, let her enjoy it.
these trips are way more than just business. You get very personal with each client, some, some more than others. You share certain passions with each client. In this particular case, the psychology of horses absolutely fascinated me. The conversations we had while I was here was amazing. The psychology behind training horses was immense. Imagine jetting that out every day. <laughs> I did a bigger snow foamer. <laughs> yeah, really, this is what it's all about. I mean, this is a part of the job I absolutely love the most. All the stages we've gone through, everything we've been through, all the work that we've done, the getting the dog from a puppy, the development stages, all to get to this this point here. Like we're in amazing places, travelling around the world, seeing different people, seeing different things. I mean, honestly, who would have thought we'd have ever got to this stage and never, you know, never dreamt of it getting this big and never dreamt of it, dreamt of it going worldwide on the scale that it has. But being here and seeing these things and being in these places with these clients is, is unbelievable. It's an experience that's hard to explain, but this is what the end result is. Everything, all the hours, all the obedience, all the protection, all the walking, all the feeding, the cleaning, and everything that we've done with that dog to get to this final point where now is with a new family in an incredible place as you can see with a really loving people that are going to love him and cherish him for the rest of his life and he's going to do his job and protect it's a win-win on everyone's side I'm, I'm happy as a business point of view obviously but more for the dog and the family and everything it's just it's been an immense experience all the way through and there's a lot more of handovers to do in all different parts of the world still yet yeah, this this year and next so it's going to be an incredible journey to continue